<laughs> oh my goodness. Question is, do I even try to fix it? Do I even try? Let's see. <laughs> All right, that's good enough, I think. Hi guys, how are you doing? Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name is Kaylee, and I'll be your host. As always, I'll put the information on the screen and in the down box below. Um, I'm the principal fiber artist and yarn dyer behind Little Bean Crochet on Etsy and littlebeanlovesyarn.com. Um, this is just a small podcast about the crafty things that I'm doing, uh, shop updates, mostly yarn dyeing, crocheting, knitting, spinning, whatever I'm doing at the moment. I try and upload weekly. Lately, it's been a little bit of a struggle. It's been a bit busy at the house. You know, school's coming to an end. I did the whole Hoagie Locatelli kit, so that was crazy. So it's been a little bit of a whirlwind here, but I'm glad that you're with me and I'm happy to see you again. Uh, so thanks for taking some time out of your day to chat about cool things with me. Um, so yeah, welcome back. It is Friday the 12th, and I can't believe that May is pretty much halfway done. Uh, I don't know where all the time has gone. Uh, last time I knew it was April something, and now it is May something, and pretty soon it'll be June, July, August, September something, and then we'll be back to the fall again. So, uh, welcome back. I hope that you guys are all doing well and enjoying your week and that you have great plans for this weekend. Um, in the United States, it's Mother's Day, so please, happy Mother's Day to all my fellow moms out there, whether you're, you know a mom of a fur baby or a mom of a human baby or if you are like a mom to somebody that you know happy mother's day to you everybody deserves a celebration so that's it that's it so as you can see i am back in my living room today um cecilia is at school it is friday so i can have the nice lighting and the sunshine and the car noise but you know what i'll take it <laughs> take the sunshine and the car noise over my craft room any day so um so let's just get into everything my hair is an absolute mess sorry 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 <laughs> sorry about that uh i just finished my third cup of coffee that's fun just took a bunch of pictures for the hoagie locatelli kits i have a few left over that are going to go into the shop, I think, tomorrow. If I can list them tonight, I'd like to probably just get them listed and out tonight. So if people wanted them, then they could just get them and I can ship them tomorrow kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, she launched all the, the pattern already for the kit. If you haven't heard, Hoagie Locatelli It's having a mystery knit along for a wrap, a rectangular wrap. It's called the Starting Point MCAL, and I'll put the um, hashtags down here. Spoilers, if you're not wanting to see spoilers, don't go to the hashtags on Instagram. Uh, people tend to post those things. Uh, she did provide some text boxes to put as your first photo so that if you want to scroll and see, um, you can scroll and see. So you can use it on Instagram or on your project page on Ravelry so people don't get spoiled if they don't want to get spoiled. And I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but it's a five color shawl. Excuse me, it's a five color shawl and I dyed up a couple of kits for it and I have all the leftovers right there are behind me. So those will be going up soon. All right, let's get into crafting things. Um, it's been, you know, a moderately crafty week. I Last week I finished up dyeing, so that was my main craft for the week, was getting all those kits dyed, packed up and shipped out. But I did spend some time spinning this week and starting knitting on a new project, so I will show you those things now. Okay, so let's talk about some knitting. Uh, I don't have this in a project bag, it is literally just strewn about in my living room. But I started knitting up a project on the yarn that I dyed with Cecilia over Easter. So this was the yarn we had dyed with her Easter egg tablet. So you can see it's a cute little pastel yellow with blues and pinks and all of that. Um, so yeah, there's a good shot of it. I wasn't sure what to do with it. It's just on a DK weight superwash merino base. I dyed four skeins. And initially I thought I would use my knitting machine and knit up some panels and then seam the panels together. And I got two panels knitted and I was going to seam them together and I realized how much I really hate seaming and I always forget it <laughs> until I start having to do it again and I say, 
every time, please stop making projects to seam because you hate seaming. Uh, so I decided to, th those are still kind of sitting to the side over there, but um, I took one of the other balls and I started knitting a shawl. So I started knitting the Ardent, Ardent shawl uh, and that is a Yanina Calio um, pattern. Uh, I think she's changed her company name to Woolenberry now um, so you can find her patterns on Ravelry under Woolenberry but it's the Ardent wrap or Ardent shawl and it's a one skein shawl. I am about three quarters of the way through uh, my first ball of yarn. I'm not sure how much I'm going to have but as you can see it's just a simple garter stitch shawl with some lace so I let lace which will block out very nicely and I'm just going along so I finished the second lace repeat there and now I have to do some garter and then another row of lace and then I'll begin my next garter panel. It's a very, very, sorry, it's a very, very, very easy knit and it's a one skein shawl. So if you have a skein of fingering weight, um, you can do a one skein shawl with this pattern. It's very intuitive. It's very easy to remember. So once you've done a couple of rounds of the repeats, you know the increase slash decrease, like how you're doing it and you know what goes into the lace panels because it's the same every time so you're able to pick up where you left off. Um, as you can see the increased edge is over here so on the beginning of the rows you can kind of tell what you're doing, where you're doing it so it's really easy to pick up and you know that you're always increasing on the ends. So it's very simple in that way. Um, it's a really great pattern. I don't think it's free, but um, it's definitely worth the money because it's an easy one skein burner. So I don't know if I'll end up using any of this skein, if I'll just knit up this shawl and then knit Cecilia or Crochet or something else. Uh, I wasn't feeling super inspired <laughs> by this yarn yet, uh, but I think that this is a really cute project and I think she'll really like it. Um, and especially to snuggle up with it in her chair. I think she'll really like it. And these are definitely her colors, so that's that. All right, and I don't have any crochet. I didn't work on my crochet shawl. In the last episode, um, I showed you a Tunisian crochet shawl pattern that I'm going to be writing up. Um, I haven't knit on that at all this week. I just haven't had any time to, or I haven't crocheted on it at all this week because I haven't had time to. Um, I also started a sample for my local yarn shop using a couple of yarns that they have in stock so it's another way for me to kind of have the pattern and kind of work out any of the kinks that I want to work out before I like publish it <laughs> for real. It's a pretty simple pattern but it's just a matter of getting it done and having a finished object so I can take a photo of it and all of that uh, stuff. So there's no more crocheting or knitting. Yeah, you know, it's just, that's what ends up happening sometimes. But I do have some spinning. I have some spinning that I finished and some new spinning that I started. Um, and I'll show those to you now. So first I'll show you the spinning I finished. So last episode, or the episode before, I showed you this finished spin that I did on some of uh, fiber that I got from Bren Boone. This is a Polworth silk blend. And this was just kind of like a rainbow-ish type color. It went from a pink, a pink to a blue to a greenish yellow. And I three-plied it and I got just about a bulky weight, heavy worsted to a bulky weight. It's probably around 110 yards or so for this amount of fiber. So I finished that and I had received my spin along uh, fiber from AJHC Wools that I had showed you last week and it was a super fine merino which is an 18.5 micron count merino and silk 50-50 uh, is a split and it is mulberry silk so it was a very squishy and soft and I didn't want to spin it because I just wanted to lay on it all day but I realized that it was going to make a lovely drapey yarn and so the goal for the yarn 
as it always is, was to spin as thinly and consistently as I can and then chain ply it and see what I get. And my goal for this yarn was to make it into a DK weight yarn. I wanted a three ply DK weight so I wanted to spin around a lace weight so that I could get right into that sport slash DK range. I asked for some help on Facebook groups. I think I asked in a spinner's study uh, for some help and everybody was really great in giving me advice. So what I did was I put, so this was spun on a lower ratio. So the whirl on the bobbin is bigger. So I get fewer revolutions per petal. So it's harder to spin a finer yarn because you're pedaling a lot or treadling a lot to get the same amount of spin. So I went down to a smaller whirl on my bobbin and that means I get more revolutions per treadle. Um, and I have a single treadle so I'm just going up and down, up and down the whole time. And I was able to spin this yarn. So this came out, I have about 300 yards. It's just under 300 yards of yarn. I am very, very proud of this yarn. This is about a sport weight. Um, there are a few sections that are a little bit toward fingering and a few sections that are a little bit toward um, DK, but overall it's a pretty nice sport weight. It has a beautiful drape. I mean, I think this might be my new favorite uh, division of fiber, like having a 50-50 silk. I mean, like it is it is gorgeous and it is so soft so let me show you a little close-up of the spin hopefully it doesn't get too blown out so you can see it's very fine much finer than what I was spinning before so if we take a look side by side you can see <laughs> can you hear the birds can you hear the birds okay if we look side by side you can see the difference. This is definitely much thicker than this and the consistency, I was able to get much more consistent with this spin which made me even more proud because that's always my goal is just to be as consistent as I can be and you know it's not, I'm not a machine so I'm not going to be 100% perfect all of the time but really learning the fiber and learning the amount of fiber I want to put into each draft of of the yarn so every time that I'm drafting most of the time I'm holding the fiber bundle in my left hand which is here and I am pinching the thread with my right hand and I am separating and pulling usually either forward draws or backward draws slow ones sometimes if I have a really good treadling speed and the fiber is slippery enough I can do a bit of a long draw where I'm holding the fiber and letting a little bit of the twist get back into my bundle so that the um, the fibers catch just enough of themselves to kind of go in and I get this really nice long consistent um, thread so yeah let's see if I can get you another close-up look of the plies so I spin in a counterclockwise direction and I ply in a clockwise direction so you can see the direction of my ply and I have a little bit of inconsistency here you can see the angle is slightly different um, in some of these like this pink strand here is a little more loosely plied I was having a little trouble um, with the silk knowing exactly how much twist to put back into the ply okay now let me focus um, how much twist to put back into it because I had to spin so finely so the singles were very charged they had a lot of spin in them I didn't over spin which was great and um, I, I have some spots in here that are under plied but generally speaking this came out wonderfully I could not be more pleased um, I did have some trouble spots where the the yarn did that break or is that my tie oh that's my tie oh, I just had a heart attack I just had a heart attack I thought my yarn broke um, so I had some spots in here where the yarn was a little underplied and then when I was plying it because it was so fine I did have some spots that were a little underspun so then when I went to go ply it because of the five the 
it was so thread-like and so fine it would break so I had a couple spots where I, it broke and I had to kind of work it back in and try and graft it in seamlessly um, yeah I guess that's all I really had to say about that so that is the spin that I did and I finished it and I'm so proud of it I, I couldn't be more proud of it I, I just and if I'm looking at like progress, even though I, I like this spin as well, this is my jam. This is really where I wanted to be. And I'm definitely going to make something beautiful out of both of these. But I'm just so proud of myself. I can't believe I actually did it. So um, what day was it? I forget what day of the week I received this package. Oh, I should get the rest of the package. Okay, so I got the rest of the package over here so earlier this week I can't remember what day it was because honestly I never remember what day I do anything anymore except like Saturdays which is the only day I actually remember um uh, I forget if I think it maybe was Wednesday Wednesday or Thursday I oh no no I think it was Wednesday let's just say Wednesday Wednesday I got a package uh from Log House Card Co Log House Cottage Log House Cottage can you say this Kayleen Log House Cottage and Shelly is the indie dyer behind Log House Cottage. She is in Canada. Um, she had posted in one of the yarn groups that she was nearing 1,000 sales on Etsy. So, of course, I had to buy something from her to help push her over 1,000 sales, which is great. I'm so happy for her. So congratulations, Shelly. Um, so I ordered it last week, and it came this week. And I wanted to show you what I got because I've already started spinning on it. And I got these little extras in my little package, and I'm so excited to show you. So it came in this cute little box. Um, I don't even know where she got this box, but it's thinking adorable. And when I opened it, it was wrapped really nicely. It had tissue paper and everything over the top with the fiber inside and these lovely little extras. So as a thank you, she had sent out uh, a few little extras to me uh, for helping her hit for 1,000 sales. So she sent me a little project bag for Log House Cottage uh, hand dyed yarn and fiber with her business information. It's a nice uh, bag to accompany Uh, very cute, very useful. Thank you, Shelly. And also, she sent this little goodie bag of um, candy and notions. So she sent a little needle protector. So it's one of those needle protectors that you can insert your needle, your circular needles inside, and it keeps your um, yarn secure. So instead of having just a rubber stopper on the end, it's kind of just a tube. This is what it's called. The needle keeper. Really creative. Uh, some chocolate, which I don't know how I haven't already eaten this or these because I love jelly bellies. Uh, jelly belly jelly beans. And it's funny because she's from uh, Canada, so everything is en anglais et en français. So um, it's very nice. And a few packets of tea which are so cute. Uh, we have mint and English breakfast tea and oh, a bag of our lovely, truly herbal tea, which might be rose, rose stuff, but this I think is clipper teas. I've never tried clipper teas before, so I'm excited to try these. And a little nail file, some stitch markers, which one of them is a little tiny teddy bear. Let's see if you can see inside. Take them out. Why bother? Just take them out. It's easier. Um, just really simple stitch markers. Um, a heart. Look at that. How sweet is that? That would be so cute to have on a pair of socks uh, as a stitch marker. Here's the little teddy bear. There it is. Little teddy bear. How cute. And then a beaded, a beaded marker and then a couple of the really simple, they look like safety pins. These are really awesome. I like them for crochet. And knitting too, but I really like them for crochet. So there's that. See if we can get it back in. Uh, da -da, da -da -da. There we go. And a couple of mints. A Werther's candy. And a little letter opener with her business logo on it, which is so cute. 
So thank you so much, Shelly. Congratulations on 1,000 sales. I'm so happy for you. You keep on rocking it. You just keep on rocking it. Uh, you dye beautiful things. So I'm very happy to support fellow dyer. Uh, so let's get to what I really purchased. So this was the little goodie bag she sent. And what I purchased is a 50-50 blend of super fine merino and silk. And I could not resist. I cannot remember the color way name for the life of me. But it is, it just says summer to me. It's just like summer in a braid. It's so fluffy and soft and holy moly is it bright and beautiful. So it is a 50-50 super fine merino and silk blend. You're stuck in there. Um, and you can see it is lovely shades of pink and purple orange and yellow kind of reminds me of summer tulips or um, sherbet sor sherbet sherbet <laughs> or sorbet some kind of fruity ice cream type concoction blended fruit it just is so yummy and soft and you can just see the halo it's just you just you just 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 wonderful it is so soft. I mean, I wish you had squish -o vision that you could like squish and feel this with me because it legitimately, I thought about just wearing it like this because who actually needs to spin? Um, so here's my spin. I took it off my wheel. Hopefully I don't unravel everything, but here we go. It is spinning up so nicely. So I'm spinning across the top. So I've taken it again. This is I'm trying to do all the same methods until I feel really comfortable and then I'll start playing around with my methods. But again, I'm spinning across the top. So I take the end of the braid and I'm spinning right from the end of the braid. This braid is so nice and loose. It's not felt like, you know, not felted, but like compacted too much. It has a nice loft to it. So it's very, very easy to spin from the end. So I'm just taking it from the end and spinning it onto my spindle. And then what I will do is go back and chain ply it when it is finished. Here we go. So you can see here the fineness, which I'm spinning. And I will show it to you, hopefully, the easiest way possible here. Without being too crazy. Here we go. So you can see it is a very, very fine spin. It is I would say lace weight. I am really, really trying to keep it down. Uh, lace weight, keeping it uh, as thin as I possibly can because I want to three ply this again to try and make a DK sport to a DK weight. And I was successful last time, so I'm hoping I can do it again, just replicate what I had done. Uh, so I'm having a lot of fun. I've only been spinning on it a couple of days. I have, you know, a lot of fiber to go through, but it's going, you know, at a nice pace. I feel like I can get a fair bit done when I sit down to do it, and it's really relaxing for me. I'm enjoying it as an alternative to crocheting and knitting right now, because most of the time when I'm sitting, I just want to be sitting and not um, thinking too much about everything that's happening around me because it's been so chaotic lately. So spinning is this nice zen-like just gonna zone out for a minute like that's how I feel um so that's that all right so that's all I have for crafting now on to shop update information and I can show you a little what's behind me um I have some first I have a motorcycle so Thank you, Motorcycle, for going down the street right now. Uh, but I do have some kits that are available that I'm going to try and put up later tonight or tomorrow. Hopefully this vlog goes up um, this afternoon. I'm going to buckle down and just edit and get it uploaded. Uh, so, oh, crud. <laughs> I meant to do the Ask Me Anything section. All right, let's go to Ask Me Anything. So I did solicit for some questions. Where are you going? I don't know. Uh, okay, so I did solicit for some questions today. I only got one question. Let me also check my Ravelry group. 
Oh, if you didn't know, there's a Ravelry group for this podcast. If you're interested in joining, you're very much welcome to. You can introduce yourself in the introductions thread. And if you have questions for me, you can also leave them there. I do have show notes that are left below this video. And also I put up the video in show notes on Ravelry as well. So it depends where you like to browse. Uh, let us check for questions. The questions for this. All right, there are no questions in the Ravelry group. We have a whopping 142 people hanging out over there. So, hi guys, I hope you're well. And, um, oh, and, oh, there are things, there are things. Okay, so the only question that I received was on Instagram from Caroline, who is um, Clarissa Betts' mom. She's under, uh, inspired underscore professor on Instagram. Uh, Clarissa Beth and uh, Caroline just did a mother-daughter podcast, so if you haven't checked it out, you should definitely do it. But she asked me, um, because at the beginning of this whole journey, I was talking about why I started dyeing yarn. Part of it was because I wanted to bring um, some more fine fibers to crocheters, because I feel like you know, fine fibers often get associated with knitting, whereas acrylic big box yarns tend to get associated with crochet, so that was part of my mission when I started my business, which I think I'm succeeding, and I think there are a lot of crocheters and knitters who buy my yarn, so um, thank you to everyone who has purchased yarn or follows me on Instagram and likes my feed or my yarn, but she asked me if I was planning to do any other types of yarn that don't have wool in them. And I know why, because she lives in Puerto Rico, <laughs> so it's very warm there. Um, so at the current moment, not really, um, only because I, I've i never dyed things other than protein fibers. I've, I've never dyed plant fibers before, so I've never dyed linen or flax or um, cottons. I, I've never even attempted it, so I don't even know if I could do it. I could definitely try to, uh, but I do want to include another base. <laughs> I'm always looking for another base. I'm like, oh, these wonderful bases. But it's a silk base. It's a 50-50 silk. Big surprise. Uh, but it is quite lovely. And it is soft, lightweight. It takes dye beautifully. Um, it is superwash merino in silk. 50-50 fingering weight. But I feel like it's a nice, light, it's a lighter feeling yarn than a traditional, um, you know, 75% wool yarn. It has this, look at this drape, it's just quite, oh, mm, I'm just in love with silk right now, I don't know if you can tell. Uh, but I would like to try and include uh, a silk base in my regular lineup. I know I had spoken a couple of podcasts ago about kind of alternating in appropriate bases for the season because I, I, not many people are purchasing bulky yarn. I know I'm not on, in the search for bulky yarn right now as a consumer. So, you know, having something lighter and softer for the summer, for those summer knits, having a 50-50 silk might be nice. Um, I did dye prongs kits on a 50-50 silk, and I do have some skeins left over, so hopefully I can get some color raised dyed on for the next shop update. So I'll have some silk, too. Um... But no, so I don't plan to do any plant fibers right now just because I don't have the skill set to do it. I've never attempted to do it. I've never looked up how to do it. Um, I know it takes a bit longer. There's a lot more steps to the process and you're using different materials. So for right now, no, but I'm thinking about um, popping in a wool silk blend as a lighter alternative because it is a very nice lightweight yarn. Or if people enjoy lace weight, I'm happy to entertain the lace weight, but most of the, of the time I feel like um, speckled colors don't necessarily show up very well on lace, only because the fiber is just so incredibly fine. I don't know. I don't know. I'm always open to anything. Um, and then I did want to answer another question I get fairly often. So on Instagram, if you're following me, you saw the other day I had posted a an alternative background to my photos. So normally I use just a plain white background. I use a light box and a plain white background for my photos, but it's kind of difficult to dye lighter colored yarns and then photograph it on such a white base. Now using a white background is great because it gives you, as a person who's looking at the yarns, browsing the yarns, shopping for yarn, 
the, the truest color possible. So my camera is really great. It's very true to color and it picks up the light box well like photographing inside the light box using this camera is great it's a wonderful pairing even if i tried to use my iphone to uh, photograph in the light box my iphone shifts colors very yellow green uh, and it's almost impossible to balance so um so yeah i wanted to answer that question i did film a little segment here while I was taking photos of all this yarn about an hour ago and I will just insert this now so here's past Kayleen bringing you the light box hey guys all right one of the biggest questions that I always get asked is how I take my photos uh, for the shop so the biggest advice that I have for those who are going into their own business whether it's in hand dyed yarns or some other product Pardon the crazy mess. <laughs> I'm trying to get work done during nap. Um, so the biggest thing that I would give for advice is to invest in a really nice camera. A camera that has great color accuracy, that you're able to focus well, that you're able to, you know, set the settings where you'd like them. And in an ideal world, you'd like to shoot under natural lighting because it gives the most pleasing experience uh, for your products and if you can get your color correct under natural lighting that's always ideal. For me our apartment doesn't really have great windows. We have some pretty good windows in this room. This is our living room as you can see behind me is my couch and um, I can't always take pictures in here under natural lighting because of the kids and usually there's a big mess in here which is in front of me, which is all of the toys that you'll see in a moment. Uh, keeping it real, keeping it real here. Messy hair, messy room. It's mom life, I suppose. So uh, I invested in a light box. So I got a closed light box, one that zips shut on all sides, is light tight, has an opening on the top to put my camera, or a flap on the front so I can adjust products or take photos through the front of the light box but I did want to show it to you here um, and I also wanted to show you my background so I normally take my photos on a white background because it gives the best color accuracy and crispness but taking photos of lighter colored yarns like you know more cream colored yarns or yarns like flowers for Dobby that are very pale gray or very pale tan um, that don't have a lot of really vibrant saturated colors it is a beast a beast a beast to get the white balance corrected for the photo without absolutely washing out the yarn or blinding you um, so there's a very fine balance between that so I wanted to show you my setup and how I set my yarn up for photos so I'll show you right now all right you can see in front of me is my light box I got this box off of Amazon and it has an opening on the top as you can see here where my background is and I have a nice switch so you can see the light is off or on depending how I need it um, and then there are zippers down the sides and then a velcro opening on the front so for the purpose of what I'm going to show you I was just taking pictures of my prongs kits so you can see inside normally I would just have the white background but I recently got some wood whoops I got some wood type background to place in my box so that I could take more interesting photos so what I do is I take my yarn and I place it in there how I want it and I only have a 16 by 16 box, so I'm not able to do more than, say, five skeins at a time to take a good photo. But I line them up how I'd like them to be. So we'll give a little zhuzhing here. And I make sure all the ends are tucked in, that everything looks very neat and tidy. So I try and estimate, you know, the center of the box that I can easily crop out. But you can see it's a relatively small box. I don't have a lot of room in there to take these ad adventurous um, photos. But you can see here, it looks very nice under the LED lights. It has a very true white 
podcast. And then I snap a picture. Snap, snap. And that's the photo that you would see on Etsy or on Instagram or anywhere else that I am posting photos. So I do, I usually take photos on my good camera, transfer them to my phone, and then post to social media from there because this has the best quality. Um, I don't mind using my iPhone to take photos, but the iPhone shifts color is very, very green and yellow for me. So I have a huge, huge issue of color accuracy uh, with taking photos on my iPhone, even in the light box. Um, so yeah, so that's my setup for photos. It's not uh, very fancy. Normally I don't have it out here, but I needed to be able to sprawl out all of my stuff because I have a huge pile of yarn next to me that are going to go listing in the shop as a ready to ship sets for the Hoagie Locatelli knit along, the starting point mystery knit along. Um, but yeah, so that's all. That's what I wanted to show you. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, so back to the future, here we are. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed that uh, little segue. It is definitely one of the more common questions that I get because I talk about photographs a lot and I, the way I position my photos and place my yarn in my photos is very consistent. So I always get the question about like, what camera am I using or um, what is my setup for photos? So I'm happy to answer that. All right, now. Let's bring it to shop update. Really shop update this time. So last week I did all the Hoagie Locatelli kits. I got those shipped out and people have started receiving them. And I hope most of everyone has received theirs already. I tried to get them out promptly on Friday. If not, first thing it was on Saturday morning for the kits that weren't quite dry yet. Um, so hopefully everybody has received theirs. Everybody's already happily knitting on the Mystery Knit Along. So for this Saturday, You'll notice if you have been following along my shop, you'll see that my yarn is gone. I have no stock left in the shop. It's kind of strange. Um, not because I just had a rush of sales, which would have been very nice, but I was invited to do a trunk show in Murfreesboro, Tennessee at the Naughty Knitter. I had some folks contact me to ask if I would like to send, if I had stock on hand and if I would like to send it along as part of a trunk show for independent dyers down at the Naughty Knitter shop. And I said, of course I would. So earlier this week, I put together all of the stock that I had in shop, got everything labeled, packaged up, shipped out, and I'm happy to say that things are on display. So I won't be there, but my yarn will be. So if you're in the Murfreesboro area and you know the Naughty Knitter shop, definitely head in, take a peek. You'll see a little table with all little bean yarns on it. And it's a very exciting thing. So hopefully everybody enjoys it. Um, hopefully they don't send a ton of yarn back to me. I hope everybody finds something for a project that they're wanting to make. So um, so anyway, so my shop is empty right now. So the only things that I have that are going to be going into the shop, the things that are in there now, I have some sock kits still available. Surprisingly, I still have a couple ready to go of uh, the Fleur and Feathers kit, the self-striping kits that Lynn and I did as a collaboration. And I have some tonal dye to order listings still available. So if you are looking for um, a tonal to match a skein that you have, I do, I do them to order. I don't have all the colors listed yet. I have to be a better person, naughty naughty, and get them all listed. But uh, if you're ever wanting to purchase a um, mini skein or full size skein to complement a variegated skein that you purchased from me, definitely put in put an order in for it, and I can let you know which color is the proper match for it if it's not listed in the listing itself. I just had someone order Beaubaton, and she ordered an aqua mini skein, but aqua wasn't the color used so I let her know that it was teal and I have it and I can dye the teal that's in the yarn. She's like, oh yes, that's the one I want. So um, just so you know, fair warning, not all the colors are listed. Uh, so I will be putting up these kits and I'm going to show you the ones that I have now. I have one in every base for prongs, so I have one in silk, one in luxe, one in everyday, and one in sparkle. And then I have one kit left of Nymphadora in sparkle, that's the last one. Uh, so yeah, let me show you them now. Okay. So this is the kit that's left for Nymphadora. So don't call me Nymphadora is this colorway here. It's a very bright, beautiful color with greens, pinks, purples, grays. Very vibrant, very pretty, nicely variegated. And so I deconstructed the color and these are the complementary colors that are available 
as part of the kit. Um, even if you're not doing the mystery knit along and you are looking for a project that uses a variegated skein and other tonal skeins, these are great colors to go with this one. Let's see if I can hold them up all at the same time, shall we? All right, there we go, I did it. Um, so we have a nice dark black with pink undertones, a very vibrant chartreuse, a very pale vibrant chartreuse, um, a mid-tone pink, and a cool toned violet, which are all the colors that are used in this skein. So it's kind of a nice deconstruction. So this was one kit. This is the only one I have left. This is the only one available. It's on Sparkle. So if this is your jam, definitely come and snatch it up. All right. Oy. And then the other ones that I have are all prongs. So let me show you each piece. All right. Okay, let's see if I can hold these all up. So this is the 50-50 silk, 50% uh, superwash merino, 50% silk. It is incredibly soft. Da -da -da -da. So here it is. There are some gold tones in this sage, which I thought was very pretty. Some of my sage broke um, in the pan when I was dyeing it, so some of the sage skeins have this nice light um, break in the color, which gives it a lot of interest, I think, so let's see if I can hold these up. I can hold them still. There they are in silk. You can see the lovely sheen on the silk base, especially in the darker yarn. It is gorgeous. Like, look at how shiny that is. It just is soft, squishy. Like, I really like this base a lot, which is why I want to carry it. Here's prongs on silk. It's very beautiful. And then here are the other three colors. So silk, very soft and lovely. <laughs> All right, I've lost, I locked myself in my own pile of yarn here. I thought I had everything squared away. All right, so here is on everyday sock. So these are all the colors. Whoops! And there's prongs on every day. Again, some beautiful yellows and browns and these sagey greens. And the brown breaks red, which is so lovely. Um, and then the complementary colors. Again, so I just broke the color apart. I broke the colorway apart into its base base units. <laughs> So to speak. So one on every day. This is ooh, yeah. this is on Lux. I love how Lux dies up. It's so pretty. Lux really gets pops of color. So you'll see just these nicely saturated spots, speckles. They're just so hot right now. So that's prongs on Lux with the complementary colors. And everything is so beautiful. Beautiful. I want to keep one of these for myself, but if, if I'm being truly honest with myself, am I really going to knit up the new one? Am I really going to be that disciplined? Because I can't even finish a crochet project right now. So how am I going to have discipline for this? I want to keep the silk one. <laughs> and then this is on Sparkle. So again, just lovely, squishy, beautiful yarn. All right, that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this little podcast. And um, yeah, so I'm not sure when my next shop update will be. I don't think it will be next week. It probably will be the following week. I'd like to take a little like breather after all of those kits. I had so many kits. <laughs> guys I was drowning in kids I'm like what did I get myself into it was a beautiful kind of tired you know what I mean so um so yeah the next shop update probably won't be next week it'll probably be the following week but please keep your eyes out if you're looking for one of these kits uh as a ready to ship kit I only have one of what I showed you that's it this is everything so um please keep your eye on Instagram because I will post up there the time that I'm going to put these live in the shop so if you're really hunting for one and you want this one of these you got to be on time <laughs> otherwise you might miss it to be quite honest so um, 
if there's big demand to dye more as the knit along goes on, I'm definitely happy to open more pre-orders. Um, just please send me a message on Etsy. Instagram is not as good or Ravelry is not as good. So um, if you're looking to get in touch with me, definitely send me a message on Etsy and especially if it has to do with these kits so that I know what you guys are looking for. If there's a demand for it, I'd love to dye more for you. So that is everything. That's everything. That's everything. Ugh. It's almost two o'clock. Almost time for CC. So I will see you guys next time. I hope you had a great week. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and I hope you have a great weekend. And uh, I will. See oh, I lied. I'm not done. I'm not done. You know what I forgot about? The 1000 subscriber giveaway. Last I checked, this channel was at around 996 subscribers. If we are at a thousand subscribers when I'm going to put this up, I'm going to have to put together that giveaway. Now, I showed it a couple weeks ago. It's bringing it through the real thing. It's a real thing. I showed it a couple weeks ago. I have a couple of gift sets set aside. Um, and I am going to put some yarn with those gift sets. So excited now okay so I'm gonna have to put some yarn with those gift sets if you can let me know in the comments below if you're still watching this which I hope you are let me know what your favorite colorway is that I dye and the top two that I see down below I'm gonna put one of each like one in one kit and one in the other kit for the giveaway so stay tuned for that because that is coming that is imminent and that's only been in the last few days that we really crept up and got really close to a thousand subscribers. So let me know that below and um, I'll be announcing that shortly. If, if we hit a thousand subscribers this weekend, that would be wonderful. So I will see you guys next week. I'm very excited for this giveaway. I totally forgot to mention it earlier, even though I was, it's imminent, it's here. Um, so. All right, that's everything. That's everything. I'm really awkward and weird, and I'm sorry, but I love you, and I will see you next time. Bye!